I have to thank you. Because you're all here because you, you mean something to me, you contribute something to my thinking, um, my perspectives. You, you listen to me sometimes and let me rant a bit and then offer a different opinion. I said, oh, I never thought of it that way. I'll go back and do some thinking. Um, I didn't write a speech for today because I thought that I have spent so long writing stuff um, that I, and, and I put in a book so you don't need another speech from me. And I had to write the book, um, you know, at one point in the book I, I, I make it very clear to whoever's reading so that they understand at least one of my biases is that I'm, I'm a Christian. And I think it's really important that our faith is exhibited practically. Um, not just showing up at church and doing stuff, but the actual practical essence of who we're supposed to be. And part of it is that we're supposed to be bold, we're supposed to have dominion, we're supposed to not accept being less than. And many of you here, are, like me, are not millennials and, and below. But ultimately, we influence them, and I hope as many of them as possible will read this book. Because everything you see around you, and a lot of my inspiration is from them. They did all the work. They produced all these wonderful things. Um, some of the parts of the book you, 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 you heard were written by them. They have what it takes. We just sometimes need to give them the room you know, to demonstrate to us what they have. Because as a people, if we're not building our future, then we're really lost. You know, when I first joined the telecom industry, one of the specific things I was told in my interview um, at the time working for a bank in London was that um, they wanted to recruit people like me because they couldn't find any talent in Africa. And when I joined the industry in 2008, across the, the, the country, at least for Ghana, most of the leadership teams of, the, of these companies were not Ghanaian. It was the norm, it was the accepted norm. And some of us had to fight that extra mile, go, go that extra, you know, um, I have one of my sons here and he has a, a scar across his chin because one, I, you know, I come home after a long week, he was excited, he was three years old and he fell off his chair and it's quite cut and we ended up at Nyaho Clinic, thank God for Nyaho Clinic. But the point is that we, we did the work that we needed to do with the support of all our friends and family and so I, so th I say thank you to all of you. But it's not lost on me also that some of those things happened um, because we were a generation, or at least some of us, had the supports, the people who believed, the opportunities that we needed years ago to be who we are today. Um, you know, if you look at telecoms, and I talk about the leadership change, by the time I was leaving the industry, the time I left the industry, most of the leadership were Ghanaian, and many of my former colleagues are in this room with me. But the other thing that people don't, don't appreciate is that in this country so far, four Ghanaians have led telecom companies. Philip led the way for all of us, and unfortunately, I don't think he's, he's made it here because he said he might be traveling. What most people don't know is that the other three of us knew each other as teenagers. And that should tell you something, that the people who are going to lead us one day are already out there. And the question is, what are we doing about them, right? Patricia and I sat in, sat in class, some of our schoolmates are here, so they, they know the story, I don't need to give them the, the, the drill, right? Selom and Patricia were in university together, and by, by, by virtue of the fact that we knew so many um, people, Selom and I got to know each other years ago. We didn't even have degrees when we knew each other. So the stage was set a long, 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 long time ago, decades ago, and we have had the good fortune to now be in these positions. The question is, where is our future pipeline? Are we just going to fold our arms and say it's all doom and gloom and deny our young people? Because we can't continue to be outliers. It has to be the norm. There has to be so many of us that people don't even notice us, right? I'll, I'll end on this note because tonight is about young people and we're gonna have just two of them here with us very, very briefly because I, I, I don't like to do things without them because it is about them. A week or two ago, many people celebrated um, Jumia, Jumia's IPO, and the headline was about this African, um, <laughs> this African um, um, e-commerce uh, tech company that was the first to be listed. Now, 
for me, the fact that Jumia's shareholding was predominantly non-African is not it was not news because I knew sort of the foundations of um, Jumia, and I knew that most of the early investors had been telecom companies, multinational telecom companies. So it we weren't going to be um, um, part of it. But I think what upset me, so I wasn't obsessed about the shareholding. What upset me was hearing the Jumia CEO in 2019 repeating what I was told in 2008. That really upset me. He said that all their tech development was done in Europe because they, haven't they can't find talent in Africa. This story isn't changing, and I, I look upset because I am upset every time I think about it. We cannot continue to live and be exactly as we are. Then what was the point of living, really? I don't want anybody to have the effrontery to do business in Africa and claim not to find people to do the work in Africa. It's our money. The business is thriving on our money, and yet we're creating non-African jobs and saying that our young people need jobs. Every single one of us who have achieved anything, we left school and we were trained by a company. Some company took us under their wing and took us, uh, and took us through a development program. And it happens all over the world. So why should companies come to Africa and assume that they need to have ready-baked, ready-made talent for their new industry? We can't continue to accept these things. It's absolutely got to change. And it starts with us saying different things about ourselves to each other before we even say them to the rest of the world.